Welcome to Pay to Play Report for Plague's Tale Innocence. This is a game available on PC, PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. I played it naturally on PC because that's the best way to experience the game as far as I'm concerned. It's a primarily a stealth game with a heavy story. When I'm talking about heavy story, I'm talking about the fact that it has a deep themes in it and such. So the story itself is a journey of a sister and a brother through medieval France during the period of the plague. They are being pursued by the Inquisition at the same time and you're trying to find a safe haven from the Inquisition later on It's you know story keeps on developing. So let's jump into the first thing we will do is into the graphics uh, and settings for that. I can show you that I run everything at highest graphics uh, possible and generally most of the time it's around 60 frames per second. You just saw a situation where the there was a dip in the frames per second. Uh, it happens every so often. I'm not exactly sure why it happens. And looking online and trying to find things, I did not find anything there that um, that would really help me with that. And the general conclusion was that it has to do something with an engine because it's a proprietary engine created by developers themselves. So it's not like they bought an Unreal engine or something like that for the game. And so as a result. Maybe this stuff has to do with the way my hardware is interacting with an engine. By the way, the description of my hardware that I'm using to play this game will be in the description of the video. Alright, so as you can see, we have uh, you know, rats running around on the screen. That's actually quite important. You know, it's, of course, you can say rats, plague, and it's, it's so related, but keep an eye on this. This is important as we're going to go in right now, and I'm going to show you the game. I'm not going to go jump too far in the game for reason is that. I don't want to spoil much of the story for you, so you know I'm just going to jump here. I believe this is the safest allocation that you can with a jump to without spoiling anything. And watch this, right? So it wasn't the rats were not just running on the floor; they were running over a corpse that it looks like they've been eating at also. So the game immediately tells you there's more to it than uh, it's the eye. Now, each time you start the game, there's a the screen here that will start off and will give you a bit of a uh, information about the game. Yeah. Not about the game, sorry, about uh, what happened before in, the, in a prior chapter. Now, this only appears if you start the game, and a new session of the game. If you continue on to play, that's not gonna, not gonna be there. So it's kind of a neat feature, I found it pretty nice. Alright, so... Let's continue on. Here, and let's see. As I said, uh, visually, or maybe I didn't say it, uh, but visually the game is impressive in terms of uh, how it looks, how everything looks. The world is nicely made, and from all perspective, everything looks really well, right? So, again, I have no complaints about that, and I actually like the way they portray the medieval period, because usually medieval period is portrayed by having everybody... You know, have dirt on them everywhere, dirty clothes, uh, dull colors, and everything like that. And this game actually does not do that. Yes, uh, characters have dirt on them, as you can look at, but that's because they've been you know, hiding from Inquisition. But generally, we you we know, find here that other people are they clean, they wear bright colors, they wear clean clothes. So from that perspective, everything is well made, usually. Additionally, the game will also provide you cues as to what can be done and what you can do without really spoiling the immersion. Alright, so I think we'll need to hide here, start from there. Hopefully I'll be, have no problems uh, completing this area. Even though I did turn down the sound and the music for much lower so that I can actually work here in the game. Uh, well, I can explain to you the game, right? But uh, turning down the sound actually has a bit of an issue for me because I might not be able to hear some things and the sound is important because this game has a stealth element to it. Like Alright, here we are. So, we'll never get rid of these nests. so we now we need to get to bypass the guards. And that's actually, as I said, like, the game has stealth in it. And that's gonna be, you're going to be doing this a lot, trying to escape from the guards or to hide from the guards and bypass them one way or another. Now to do so, I can choose how I don't do it. And I can see I have a bit of different ammunition available. Now... This ammunition right there have rocks and and a pot. The then there's going to be more of it here later on in the game as you're going to learn different alchemical substances that you can make. You're going to be able to make them, and so you're going to be able to set things on fire, put fires out, create explosions. All that will become available. Right now, we just saw early in the game that I don't have that much of a choice, so I'm just going to throw a rock to distract the guard. So as you can see now, there's a bit of an indicator. Above the guard that tells the tells you that what's happening and how 
card is gonna react to it reacts or react to it and we gotta wait and based on this indicator the until the guard loses interest and goes back. Right and that that moment right there hopefully right now it's gonna turn around come on turn around now we can uh, sneak by past the guard so this this guy is an uh, inquisition and we're sneaking past them talking about inquisition one of the interesting elements of this game the way it's is telling you and showing things is that one of the main inquisitors that could be constantly chasing you is is the way she's shown is very interesting so one thing is that he is actually shown always have his helmet on he never takes it off and the helmet just has that cross which symbolizes inquisition and that's it that's all he did and when i say he's chasing you he is chasing you but he never runs he never pursues you any other way but just by walking at a steady pace it's like a always looming threat there he kind of personifies the fact that this inquisition is going to be Know, pursue you but they are extremely certain they're gonna catch you they're steady they are unyielding in their pursuit other guards will run after you and so on this guy will not and this kind of personification of it is just amazing i really liked it so here i'm just gonna throw a pot over here to distract this guy that noise. What was it? and then i'm gonna Go ahead and sneak by. Now I do collect things here and they're important because uh, collecting those things will allow me later on to improve my equipment, weapons and also to craft different, difficult, different alchemical substances. Alright, so now we're just gonna leave the kid here behind, the little brother, so we can sneak around another area. I can always call him back. To come and join me also that's also uh, available but here you know in this case we're just gonna go, go ahead and do this and interesting thing we just saw that there are this kind of weird spikes in the wheels right i, I think i just went too early and the guy's gonna notice me now i need to wait for him to turn away and i just talked about how well the medieval period is portrayed and of course the spikes are totally make zero sense to be in the wheels of the wagon and well the reason for them is because this wagon is actually the inquisition's wagon and it makes sense in the game because there's something off about the inquisition and that's how the game portrays it everything related to inquisition is a bit kind of weird so i think it's part of a kind of setting up the theme so it's setting up the idea that there's something off about the inquisition you can all right you. We call him back and now we continue on here. So now this is going to be one of the sections that where I need to use both the characters to solve this issue. To do so, let's see, let's, I'm going to pick up a rock first of all and we're going to distract the guard by throwing a rock here. And while he's distracted, we're going to ask the brother to sneak through and he's going to open up the window for the sister. It's kind of one of those kind of puzzles that you will be doing in the game. The game does hint uh, to, to you what you need to do, so it's, you never kind of completely feel lost. But it does sometimes offer different options for you to decide how you're going to bypass certain areas. And we'll talk about that later on a bit more. Just let me give me a second. I uh, just need to make sure the guard... Uh, he's going to pick up stuff here and go walk back. And so as soon as he does this... Great, we can sneak through. All right, that's one, and now we just have to wait again for for the guard to do this again, and then we're gonna sneak out through again. Now, if you don't want to get discovered or leave uh, the kid uh, alone for too long, because he will then panic and start screaming, and as a result, you'll be found, and if you're found, you get killed, basically. So there we go, we're gonna pick this up here again and I need to distract this guard so I'm gonna use a pot since there's nothing metallic I can throw a rock against. There we go, while he, the guard is distracted let's, let's sneak away and hide here. 
All right. So besides what I just talked about, that inquisitor that will be ch uh, chasing after you, there's other things in this game where the game kind of uh, tells you the story and and the themes it develops. So. One of the main themes, of course, is that it's uh, good versus evil, and idea of that knowledge could be used for good or, or evil. Uh, Inquisition is also using alchemical substances for their own purposes as, mu as much as you will be using that, so there you go. But there are other elements in this telling of the story that they use, Met metaphors, allusions, uh, imagery, that's all done really, really well. So one of the first things that you will note, if you'll see in the game when you start it off, is that you'll be in, you'll find uh, an apple tree in the middle of a forest, in the middle of a clearing of a forest, which is a quite clear allusion to Garden of Eden elements there, right? Uh, the fact that she, the girl uses uh, a sling as her primary weapon, well, actually as her only weapon, the, you can also throw stuff, but uh, by hand, but that's not going to do much good. Her only weapon is a sling. Is again is another allusion, I think, to David versus Goliath situation. It's here being the David and Goliath could be seen as well Inquisition, belligerent armies, uh, angry peasants that uh, just want to kill anybody who is not from your village and so on. The rest of the world, basically, that you're dealing with. You, at no point in the game are you ever feeling that you have so much. You know, power or so that you can just plow through any situation. No, you always kind of tr overcoming situations that are much more difficult than it appears to be for the kids to resolve. So from that perspective, uh, I really like the games. Actually, by the way, you don't need to sneak away, sneak around uh, mostly here, right? Uh, we can also kill the guards. That's also a possibility right there, I just did that, right? And so, from that uh, perspective, it's kind of possible, like say, like, I don't want to sneak around here constantly, I can just take out the guards, and depending on the situation, the, you know, some are easier to than, than others to take out. But the game also makes it pretty clear that there's a psychological impact from all the violence around the kids, and the, ki the ones they, they themselves per perpetuate. And, okay, and commit, right? All that has psychological effect on them, and the game just doesn't tell you that. It doesn't just only show it to you, it actually have you play through that, those segments. Where this uh, kind of a pressure of that, why, psychological pressure of all that happens around them, is, you know, is shown in the game through gameplay. So I really like that again. Okay, so th that guy is wearing helmet so I won't be able to use a sling to take him out so I just need to distract him using a pot. What's all the racket? And then we can just sneak through. Get up, told you I'd catch you. Amicia! Oh Amicia! that didn't work out. Um guess we have to try this again. <laughs> make sure make sure we're a bit more careful this time. Uh oh 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 yeah All right, let's wait. Eventually the guard will, will start walking. There we go. So, like as you saw, you know, there are failure states as such. You know, I, I did not think about uh, properly how to distract the guard and so the guard did not get distracted enough to for us to sneak by. Which I will have to again try again. And do this, okay. I'm gonna sneak through here. Wait for this guard to come to come up here and then walk away. While well, he's not looking, so we can just bypass him here. Like I said, there's a uh, solutions. I don't have to kill him. But I don't have if I don't want to, it's uh, my choice. <laughs> and we now the guard is distracted, we wait proper situation and careful how you land. Right. And there we go, we sneak away. Here we go. Okay. Here's an example of a crafting table where you'll be able to upgrade your weapons and your equipment. And it's part of the section here that you also need to start thinking about your resources because in the game 
the ammunition that you're gonna make the alchemical substances use the same stuff that you use to upgrade your equipment and so you need to decide how much of that ammunition you want to carry how much you want to make there's a limit how much you can carry of different elements and different um, things so you have to kind of make a decision are you are you going to be using your ammunition against the guards or you want to keep the stuff so you can upgrade your equipment for later so on so there we go so besides actual sneaking around there's other elements in the game and other things that you're going to be doing in the game one of the things that you need to be really concerned about the game are the rats because they eat people here and so there will be situations where you're going to have to do some kind of a puzzles to avoid the rats in order to escape from the rats and so on so this is another part uh, that uh, of the game that you'll be doing and there's also going to be other situations such as where you just need to solve a puzzle in terms of how to get across let's say a river or traverse a certain uh, area without uh, you know, not without, without any problems let's say because there's, there might not be any rats or any inquisitors there in that area you just need to solve solution find a solution to how to traverse an area just that oh there's more of these guys now so let's go hide a bit more so from that perspective you're going to be having a bit of variety it's not all you know sneaking around all the time now exploring the area is also i find that that's interesting and i cannot really say it's important but it's interesting because you will find few items around lying around that you cannot be able to pick up and this uh here an example of them i'm going to show you here we have these items um, together that we are frame drop at the same time so here they are and by clicking on them you know they'll tell you different things here about how important this was in the spirit so on that little paragraph here that it gives you but what i found the most interesting were the flowers the flowers were very kind of interesting in the serious aspect well number one the flowers are usually found by the little brother and he gives them to his sister and then he tells you something about the flowers and he might say this flower associated with luck this flower is associated with loneliness and why it's important because these things actually tie into the plot you know when they talk about luck there's going to be the you in the section of the plot where luck is important to you your characters when it talks about loneliness you this you are in the part of the uh, story where your characters are feeling lonely and so on so it's not just random stuff thrown around for to keep you know players occupied no it actually ties into the story this is really well done hey, so, one thing that i realized when i was uh, replaying through this section is that uh, this comment by little brother about the pigs is actually foreshadowing to future events that will be related to the pigs again okay so pick up some stuff here and we're going to try to sneak through again here all right so generally what do i think of this game i think this is a great game and mostly it's because of this uh, elements that it has uh, the storytelling the imagery it uses all these ele elements are just are just great and the fact is that it does kind of a gives you an option saying okay so you're gonna be sneaking through this area or you do want to take out the guard you want to put the guard to sleep or so on it gives you this options and lets you think about it. at the same time the, there's no timer on it but the game will through the story itself put pressure on you to decide very quickly without you know sitting there forever and thinking about it. even though there's frequent checkpoints if you fail you can come back but it's just the pressure of the story that the game maintains allows it it adds to that uh, kind of a idea that no, no, you have to be, you know, you have to make a decision. And you're not sure how you're going to bypass an area. Do you know that you'll be able to sneak through? Or maybe you won't be able to. Maybe you do have to take out the guard. Or maybe you don't. You don't know. But you're also at the same time waiting to see the idea is that, well, all this psychologically impacts your characters. From that perspective, I really, really like that area. Uh, that section of the game overall. And if it wasn't for this uh, weird frame rate drops... Uh, I think I would have uh, you know, ranked this game higher. Uh, the frame dra rape drops are annoying because as you move around, as you're trying to aim, these frame drops that do happen just kind of jerk your camera, right? They move it somewhere and you, you're trying to aim and slightly uh, camera jerks. To you're trying to move somewhere and it moves somewhere else. And so during the stealth sec sections of the game, it's just plain annoying. 
but otherwise what was that noise? I have no issues at all with the game bro huh? what's that so let's sneak through here again Come on. wait for those guys to lose interest do I think this game is cool? Yes, it's a cool game, and the reason for it is because of all the alchemical things you can do here. You know, the ability to set things on fire, different things, you know, create explosions and so on. All that is really cool. I really like that. So, from that perspective, I think this game is really... is a, is a great, cool game. Alright, we're gonna wait for these guys to all... offer them to turn around, and then we're just gonna sneak by. By the way, these uh, mounds type of things that you see here are rat nests and rats will come out of out of there. It's, I sadly cannot really show the rat sections of the game because I think those sections um, that it's possible to demonstrate that is going to be too much of a spoilage for the story, so I don't want to do that. Let's sneak through here again. And we're going to be clear right now. There. Okay, good. From now, from here, I think there's no more sneaking re required. You can just uh, walk into here and we can hide. Alright. So, well, that's all I have to say about this game. If you like this video, please like it. If you didn't like it, don't like it. And please follow and subscribe.